Hello and welcome back to Life's Biggest Questions. I'm Charlotte Dobre and today's question is, how were the Egyptian pyramids built? The Egyptian pyramids at Giza were built thousands of years ago, between 2589 to 2504 BC. Their main purpose was to serve as tombs that would contain the remains of royal families and officials. The pyramids are hundreds of meters tall. It took 10,000 workers 30 years to build a single pyramid. In comparison, Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris took 200 years to complete. The pyramids are colossal examples of ancient engineering and would be a challenge to replicate even with today's technology. The Egyptian pyramids at Giza are aligned almost precisely so that when you look at them from above, they form a line. There is a theory called the Orion Correlation Theory that suggests that the pyramids at Giza and the constellation of Orion's belt are directly correlated. The stars of Orion were associated with the Egyptian god Osiris, the god of rebirth and afterlife. So who built these amazing pyramids? It was long believed that the pyramids were built by slaves. The ancient Greek historian Herodotus once described the pyramid workers as slaves, and the myth was perpetuated in Hollywood movies. But in fact, the people who built the pyramids at Giza were not slaves. 4,000 year old tombs discovered by a tourist on horseback in the 90s are said to have belonged to the pyramid workers who were paid laborers, not slaves. The workers may have lived in simple houses near the pyramids, and they were well fed. Studies show that enough cattle, sheep, and goats were slaughtered every day to produce 4,000 pounds of meat to feed these builders. They came from poor Egyptian families who were respected for their work and were given the honor of being buried in these tombs that were by the pyramids, close to where the pharaohs were buried. A very high honor indeed. The largest pyramid at Giza, the Great Pyramid, was built by workers during the reign of Pharaoh Khufu, who began his rule of Egypt around 2551 BC. It is considered to be a wonder of the world. The second pyramid, only slightly smaller than Khufu's, was built by Khafra, whose reign started around 2520 BC. It is widely believed that the famous Sphinx was built during his reign and that the face was modeled after his. And the third pyramid was built by Menkor, whose reign began in 2490 BC. His pyramid is much smaller than the other two and stands at 215 feet tall. So we know that paid laborers were the ones who built the pyramids, but how did they accomplish such a task? For centuries, people have theorized how the Great Pyramids were built. Some have even suggested that they must have been constructed by extraterrestrials, and then others believe they must have used some sort of technology that has been lost in history. Though the building of the pyramids seems like an impossible task, it wasn't as impossible as it may seem. The technology the Egyptians used to build these pyramids was perfected over the course of centuries. The pyramids started as simple rectangular tombs called mastabas over 5,000 years ago during the reign of Pharaoh Djoser during Egypt's third dynasty. He ruled Egypt around 2630 BC. There was a major advancement in the construction of these tombs during his reign. Instead of a square tomb, his burial place turned into a six layered step pyramid with underground tunnels and chambers. The cores of the pyramids were made up of limestone, and better quality limestone would compose the outer layer, giving them a white or cream color that could be seen across the desert. Little of this outer layer of limestone remains to this day. Much of it has been reused for other building projects in Egypt over the course of history. To start the process of breaking away the limestone, workers used copper chisels. Then massive dolerite pieces of rocks called pounders were used to break the stone apart. 60 to 70 men would pound out the stone, and then at the the bottom, they inserted wooden pegs into the slots they had cut, and then they filled those slots with water. The pegs would eventually expand, forcing the stone to split. The block then slid down onto a wading boat. The workers then had to find a way to move these massive stone blocks across the desert sand, which seems next to impossible. Moving a heavy object across sand would result in the blocks gathering sand at the front, preventing the object from moving. Not a lot of information exists on how they were constructed, so scientists have had to piece together clues and make educated guesses. The best guess is that the sand that the Egyptians pulled the blocks across must have been wet. If the sand was dry, it would be much harder to pull these blocks, requiring more force and ultimately more workers. Not only that, but the blocks were placed on sledges that could be pushed or pulled by workers. Wetting Egyptian sand and even adding oil would reduce the friction immensely. There are scenes that exist in ancient Egyptian artwork that show water being poured in front of the sledges. Once the stones arrived at the pyramids, a system of ramps were used to haul the stones up, and then they were put in place. But Egyptologists are still quite uncertain how these
these ramps were designed, or how they worked. Very little evidence of these ramps exists today. It is expected that new data may come from the Scan Pyramids mission, which is a program where researchers at three different universities are scanning and reconstructing the pyramids using a variety of technologies. Scientists hope that this initiative will not only help figure out how the pyramids were constructed, but also if there are any hidden chambers within them that we don't yet know about. To the best of our knowledge, this is how the pyramids were built. I'm Charlotte Dobre for Life's Biggest Questions. If you enjoyed that video, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel.